Hello. Cheers. This is Tim. Uh, today, I'm going to be using my electric brewery and I'm going to brew an Irish Red. Uh, St. Patrick's Day beer. It's uh, about the end of January right now and I'm hoping to have this uh, ready to go March 17th when St. Patty's Day runs around. Anyway, first thing I'm going to do is give you a quick tour of the brewery. Uh, if you've seen my videos before, some of you know all this stuff and have seen it. And I'm going to assume that a lot of you have brewed before and are just looking to see what other people do, so I really don't think I'll go into a lot of the methods very closely, but we'll see. Uh, I hope I can remember to do everything along the way and take pictures where appropriate and uh, give you a good understanding of the process I go through. This is going to be my fourth time brewing with my new brewery set up. I learned a few tricks in the first three times. Uh, hopefully I'll keep learning some more. And if anyone has any suggestions, any ideas of ways I can do things to make my time go faster, I would sure appreciate it. I'm hoping to set a record today for brew time. I've never been able to get done start to finish in under five and a half hours. Uh, usually fixing something along the way or temperature doesn't come up right or I, various things happen and you know it's just Murphy's Law, something's going to happen. But let's see how we go today and maybe I'll get it done in a reasonable time and get my cleanup accomplished in time to have dinner. Anyway, I'll come back in a sec. Okay, here's the brewery. Moving from left to right, laundry tub sink, hot liquor tank, got a filter arm in the bottom, sparge arm on top, fittings. This thing I'm having the most problems with recently is I'm getting little drips out of my spout coming out. You can see in the floor I was doing some tests earlier and it's been dripping. Hopefully I won't lose much wort. Over here I've got my boil kettle and it's also serving as a water warmer for my um, strike and sparge water. I do have a hot liquor tank up here that when I do heat up my sparge water I will put it in this tank up here and uh, sparge from there. Uh, I've got a pump down here in the bottom and what I'm doing right now is I'm recirculating my water as it heats to keep it uh, so that the temperature is constant around it. Over here my brew controller I've got the temperature set at 168.4 which is uh, right there at my strike temperature um, and I've got it on the 240 volt side on the boil kettle side uh, of the controller. If I flip, this is running at 240 volts. If I flip it over to the other side, it'll run at 120 and it allows my rims uh, PID to come on and my rims heater circuit to come on. So both of the elements are going to be running at 120. Uh, follow it down here. Next to my boil kettle attached to the stand, I do have my rims and uh, it will be recirculating the wart as I'm mashing and hopefully that will give me a pretty clean uh, wart to boil and save me some stuff later. So without any further ado I'm going to go ahead and mash in which means I'm going to be transferring the water from the boil kettle into the mash tun and then uh, mashing in my grain. Okay, what I've done here is I've just pulled my recirculating arm out and put it in the mash tun. One thing, if anybody makes an arm like this, I think I'm going to slow it down just a little bit so it doesn't spew. Um, one thing I did do is you'll notice the bottom I squeeze the tip. That gives me a little bit more pressure coming off that. So when I'm whirlpooling with this, it uh, 
gets a better whirlpool going. I've seen people use seen people use two different pumps, and uh, I suppose that works too. And there's less chance of it clogging up. But I haven't had this clogged up yet. I've got it at least large enough to let a piece of grain go through. So um, I think it's pretty good. I got the pump going full bore right now, pretty much. But I do have it about halfway on the exit. It's going to be coming out. You'll notice uh, I do have a 5,500 watt heating element in my boil kettle. And uh, i got to go ahead and unplug that right now so I don't dry fire it. Um, I have a arm, a Whirlpool output arm on the side over there. And what I'm going to do today when I'm uh, done boiling and my hot bags are in there, I will pull the hot bags out and I'll just let them drain in this colander so that I can get a decent whirlpool. Just about got all the water out. And just about got it in. Okay, I'm getting ready to move my tubes around. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the output tube on my keg, move it to the output tube in the mash tun, and then I'm going to take, and so it'll out from the mash to the pump. Then, Drippage there. Gotta give me some quick disconnects. Okay, had a bit of drippage there. Uh, I had a hose clamp go bad on me. Uh, yeah. Right there you can see where the teeth kind of got messed up. So I had to replace my hose clamp. Now one thing I did forget to do is I forgot to turn off the water from there and it allowed it to siphon out, which was one of the reasons I was losing water so much. Um, I'll tighten that up in a second, but first thing I'm going to do, pull recycle tube out and put that over here in my rims. The next big purchase is going to be a set of about a dozen disconnects to make all this easier. Okay now before I do this uh, now, remember, take my, uh, here's a close-up of the whirlpool arm. Uh, anyway, before I start the pump going, knowing that it's dry now and needs to be primed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prime it the easy way. Okay, now what I've done with that hose, since I've pulled it off of my Whirlpool arm, I've hooked it up to a fitting that I have on my sink with the pull-out nozzle. That's a standard hose fitting uh, and an adapter that adapts it to a half-inch barb connector. And I will go over to my pump, open up the valve on the pump, and I'm just going to run some water through it. And if you'll notice, eventually that water is going to come up through my rims, and there it went. Put that that way. I'm going to shut off. I reach down and shut off the pump. Put this back on here. The reason I shut off the pump is so air wouldn't recycle back down into it. And take my clamp. 
open up the valve here and let's see what happens when I turn on the pump. <laughs> Now it's full bore right now, but you'll notice, going through, turn on my rim heater, and we'll get the temperature of that uh, water where it needs to be, 168, and which is probably pretty close to now. I'm going to start mashing in. Okay, got the rims working, uh, recirculating the water. Um, I know it's at 168 degrees in there, even though uh, my rim says it's 137. I'll just slow this down a little bit. And, uh, I'm going to start mashing in. In fact, while I'm mashing in, I'm going to stop it all together. Okay, like that, like that. You can just see the wart coming through there. Getting darker and darker. Now, I'm going to check in here and take a quick look, see how much is being recirculated. Slow that down just a little bit. Okay. Let that go. Now, my mashing temperature is supposed to be at 158 degrees. So I'm going to go over here at the, the PID controller. at 158.4 and you'll notice this second light from the end there has uh, stopped blinking which means it's not cycling the element uh, eventually when it gets down to temperature it will cycle every once in a while you'll see it blink there may not be enough light to see it but Yeah. Anyway, with that being done, I'm going to go over to my beer smith. And start my timer. Okay, my uh, rims pit is showing that it's right up and right between 56, 58 degrees. 
Getting pretty good. And Bruce Nick tells me I got about uh, 55 minutes of mashing left. Okay, quick update. Been mashing for about a half hour. Uh, the wart is coming through a lot darker now, and uh, it's pretty clear. Uh, been uh, hovering really nicely at about 158, 159 degrees coming through the rims. Uh, my sparge water is now up to 147 degrees, and uh, I'm sure it'll be up to the 202 degrees I need for my uh, four quarts to add for the uh, mash out. Uh, again, been about 30 minutes. So things are progressing just like they should. And uh, I'll check back in a little bit. Okay, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is that last night, knowing that I was going to brew today, I made up a yeast starter. What I did is took some yeast that I had washed out of a batch that I made uh, a week or two ago, a couple weeks ago, and it's going to be a Y yeast 1084 Irish Ale. Uh, washed it, had it in my uh, refrigerator, and put it in to uh, some uh, dry malt extract last night. Had it on my stirring plate. And here's what I got today. I don't know if you can see, but it's bubbling away. So that'll pitch really nice. And uh, it's going to be ready to go about the time I am. Okay, it's time for the next step. I've got to add eight quarts of water to raise the temp of my mash up to 168 degrees. I've already started uh, pulling water out of my boiling kettle. Um, almost there. Got about two gallons, and I know. Just about at a gallon and a half right now. Once I hit the two gallon mark, then I'll go ahead and uh, slowly pour it into this sparge while I'm recirculating. I let it sparge while I'm recirculating. So uh, eight and a half quarts, yes, right there. That's going, got the rims recirculating, I'm going to set the rims temp up to 168. And start my timer again. And we'll let that go. About 11 minutes, 43 seconds. Okay, while the uh, mash is mashing out, I need to get some sparge water going here. And I need about four gallons. It needs to be about 168 degrees.
According to my recipe, I need about four and a half gallons. I'm looking at my uh, sight glass. And I'm going to stop that at just a hair over four and a half. You get that up to 168 degrees. Should take just about as long as it takes to research the mash. Now what I'll do, once I uh, get the water in the boiling kettle up to 168, I'll transfer it into my hot liquor tank here so I can gradually uh, do the sparging. I have to grab a hose real quick so I can drain it and we'll be good to go. Temperature's rising pretty decent, so I fully expect I'll be at 168 in plenty of time. Okay. Barge water is all heated up, transferred into my hot liquor tank. Now it's going to be time to um, start sparging. Do a little bit of reconfiguration of the hoses here. First thing I'm going to do, turn off my pump and shut the valves. That way no air is going to get into the pump and I don't have to reprime it. Next thing I'm going to do, take the clamp off here and my sparging arm, and I take the hose out of my rims. I'm going to put that into my boil, boil kettle. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the pump going while I'm sparging, and I'll let it go through the rims and deposit stuff into the kettle. I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat up on the rims so that I'll get a little added extra heat while it's going through. Next thing I'm going to do, hook the hose up to my liquor tank, have it go down to my sparge arm, and I'm going to get a little shorter. And start letting some water through. Now I'd like to have this sparge um, complete in somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 minutes or so. Not in a huge hurry here. Open this up here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn my pump on. Open the pump all the way. And we got liquid coming out here. I don't want that much coming out. We have a little bit coming out here. So try and keep this about the same. Okay. Turn my pit up. I'm going to go ahead and max that out to above boiling. Uh, probably not going to do a whole lot of good. Uh, but uh, it'll help a little bit. See water coming out here. Going in here. Coming out here. And coming out here. Now when my liquid is above my element here, I'll go ahead and crank that up a little bit and uh, we'll get the boiling process going. While this is doing that, I got some hops to measure. Uh, my recipe calls for 2.3 ounces of fugles and uh, put that in a boil. 
In fact, you know, I haven't even gone over my recipe. Um, uh, if you go out to beersmith.com, search for bittersweet brews, that's kind of my handle, and look for Luck of the Irish Red Ale. And I've got an 8-gallon batch going here. I'm going to keg 5 gallons. I'm going to bottle the rest. Uh, it uh, consists of um, mainly barley and uh, for the flavors and of course uh, pale malt two row for the main thing. 14 pounds of pale malt, 1 pound 8 ounces roasted barley, 1 pound flake barley, uh, 10 ounces of caramel crystal, 40. Then I'm adding 2.3 ounces of fugal at the boil uh, and 1.7 ounces of pearl at uh, the boil at the flame off and of course Irish moss with 10 minutes left and I'll add about uh, a teaspoon and three quarters or two thirds uh, which is a fining agent. As I mentioned before I'll pitch uh, the Y yeast 1084 Irish Ale yeast into it. In the past I've pitched a Fermenta Safe Ale S33. Um, that works great. I had some of this that I pitched in another batch. I thought I'd try it in this recipe and see if it makes a difference. Anyway, we'll let this go and I'll come back when it's done and we're ready to get the boil going. Decided to see what the wort looked like coming out and into the kettle. Took a glass full. Well, maybe not full, but See, I don't know if you can tell, but it's pretty clear and looks pretty good. Ah, that's some sweet tea. All right, the mashing process is done. We're all sparged out. Um, I'm pumping air now, so what I need to do is reconfigure my cables a little bit, their hoses a little bit, so that we can get all the work that we want in the thing, in the thing, in the boiling kettle, in the boiling kettle. There's some wort in the rim system here, there's some wort in the pipes, um, I'm about a quart short, and that's probably what's about in those things. So to get this clean, get everything out of here, little process I have to follow. First thing I'm going to do, shut off the work coming out of my mash tun. I'm going to rearrange the camera here so we can kind of get a better idea of what I'm doing. Okay, first thing I did, shut off the mash tun. Shut off the pump. So no air goes back in. I'm going to take the hose off the mash tun and put it in my bucket here. And once it's in my bucket, I'm going to open up, I'm going to turn the pump off. pump valve and let all the liquid from the rims drain into it. And that should give me about a quart, I'm hoping. Okay, then I'm going to take the hose from the pump and I'm going to put it on the output of the, mat of the boiling kettle. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm getting ready for when I want a whirlpool. Next thing I'm going to do is take the hose off the rims. Put my bucket over here. A 
little bit of work there. Not much. Take that hose. Put it on my whirlpool arm. still a little bit of wart in here and I'm going to get that out but for right now I'm just going to worry about getting this stuff in I'm going to have to transfer this into a smaller bucket to get it in there but there you have it next step is getting the boil going Now this is about the most tricky part of the process because it's real easy to screw up here and get a boil over without wanting one. Right now I got the temperature set below 200. I'm going to crank that up and get my boil on. I'm going to set my temperature at about 210. That should get it up to the point where I can start working on keeping the hot break down so we don't have a boil over. Then I'll move it from my PID controller over to my voltage regular regulator um, SSD controller. While I'm doing that, I think I'm We'll turn the pump on just a little bit. Let's see if we can get a, a little bit of circulation in there. Once the boil starts, then I'll add my first top addition. As you can see, we're getting some circulation. Don't need it to be quite this vigorous. Come down just a little bit. Once we get the boil going at our first hops, boil time's an hour and uh, no more additions until 10 minutes when I add the Irish moss. So during that time I'll uh, perform a lot of keep cleanup tasks. So I got a mash tun to clean, a uh, bunch of other odds and ends that need to be done. But there you go. Okay, we're darn near to the boil right now. Got a little bit of a boil going already. I'm going to turn the pump off. So I got room to move around here. And, oh, let's turn that down. It's key about not having the boil over is watching it close. Now right now, I'm running 
on my SCR control or excuse me SCD my the motor control 9600 watts and it lets me turn things up and down immediately I kick the pump on it might circulate enough to where and get through the hot break and they'll get a boil over Please keep the foam down so you get to a rolling boil get past that foam Almost there, not quite. And knock the foam down. Just about there. And I think we're there. So close. There we go. Nice boil. Foam subsided. Time for a first top edition. Or really the only pre end top edition. Now, this could cause a little bit of a boil over. It's been known to happen. And tie this up a little.
Okay. Start my timer. Sorry, girl. Just stepped in my dog's foot. You okay, girl? Yeah, you are. Okay. Timer. 50 minutes till my uh, Irish Moss edition. Okay, the boil's about done. Um, I got to add the Irish Moss in a minute or two here, and then uh, let that go for 10 more minutes, and then it'll be time to shut it down. Uh, I've already hooked up my wart chiller. I have a partner flow wart chiller. And you can see I got it in my sink over here. Um, I'm running hot wart through it to sanitize it right now. And I got the pump going. So what happens is the wart comes out. Bottom of the keg, flows through the pump, through the wart chiller, back out of the wart chiller, and back into my arm. The boil's done, input my last hops, got the counter full wart chiller going, down to 116 degrees right now. Uh, another 15-20 minutes of whirlpooling and chilling, and I'll be ready to stick it into my fermenters. Got them all ready to go, star sand up, I'll just put it right into them. I'm going to take a final gravity reading before I do it though, make sure I hit my gravity and see if I need to add some water to bring it down to where I think it needs to be. Um, but we're good to go. Okay. It's been chilling now for close to a half hour. I'm down to 71 degrees. You can see the whirlpool going in there if you look real close. I'm about ready to shut the pump off, shut the water off, and uh, drain everything back in. Let the whirlpool rest a little bit, and then start bottling. Okay, there you have it all done. Two fermenters. Total of about eight gallons in the fermenters. And give it a week or two. We'll be putting them in bottles and kegs.